first. I'm absolutely shitting bricks because I don't speak fucking, you know, publicly. So, <laughs> Okay, with that out of the way, uh, greetings, and yeah, I am Jet Dragon, and here is uh, Stone Man, who's going to be assisting me. Uh, I'm going to be doing the uh, initial 101 part of the first 101, and Stone Man is going to be doing the first aid section of the 101. Um, so, on to the next bit. What is a fursuit? Tea, I wonder. Uh, fursuits? Honestly, yeah, yeah. Costumes and things like that, which people wear, but they are considered to be more than just a costume. Sorry. Right, they are an extension of the shell, the character, or they can do other things. Do you know what's going on? Anyway. So anyway, yeah, what is the first one? Wear a part of it's fragile, very expensive. So you've got to treat them carefully, whether you have one or whether you know anyone who has one, friends, family, whatever. They need to treat them respect because they're fragile and they're very expensive. Um, Basically, how to get a first look is uh, you need to find yourself a you know, character, create a character, get an you know, artwork made of it, some kind of like reference sheet of some kind, um, and then you go to find a list of person makers. You can find a list of person makers for anywhere. They are extensive, they're loads and loads of them, but never enough. There's never enough person makers. Um, and you find one that you like to start off, whether you can, you know, weigh out your costs and values and things like that. Uh, and then you go and you commission them. Basically, you give them uh, a list of what you want, yeah, your bits and pieces, and things like that, what your characters like. They will discuss the costs and things with you, and you can then get you know, your first one. A number of months or however long you know, it takes them to do it. Some people take a number of months, some people take up to a year. But you've got to be patient with them. Do not harass the person making it because they won't appreciate it. Additional information about um, person pros and cons. They give you entertainment, they give you social freedom, character, yeah, you know, kind of you can create your character and uh, develop your character in some way. Um, but you yeah, also got a lot of uh, cons with them. You got restricted movement. Some of them, some of them have even worse restricted movement. They have like a drop crotch, which makes it even harder to move. Yeah, you got much limited movement. Um, and you got some which are, uh, yeah, you have like different tiers of them, which make it easier and whatnot. Um, your other, uh, other um, cons in regards to if you get seriously overheated. Now this is a big thing with fursuits, and in particular it doesn't matter whether it's a fursuit partial or a full suit or whatever. If you have a head, the head is the part that generates the most heat and you, get, you suffer the most in the head. So you need to make sure that as soon as you start feeling quite hot and you can't really handle it, you have got to find a place to do your head. Or if push comes to shove, you have got to do your head there and then. Do not look to pass out, because that's exactly what will happen. If you move the gun for too long, if you push yourself too hard, you will pass out. And at that point, you become a medical emergency. Uh, we'll go further into that with Stone Man in a little bit. Um, you can get, like, uh, I've, I've sort of created, um, like, a, a tier system in regard to fursuits. Um, it's only a personal one, I don't know if anyone else wants to use it or not, but personally. Um, tier 1 would be basically just like cosplay, ears, tail, you know, little things like that. Um, uh, or a light partial, essentially maybe just a headpiece or something, something really light. Uh, a tier 2 uh, would be like a full partial, you'd end up with like beatbox, handbells, tail, heads, you know, other bits of this type, like maybe bring into a costume. Okay. Um, uh, 
Sorry about that. Um, and then you have like tier three, it would be like medium weight, and something we've got a little bit of padding, significant features, you know, things like that, maybe a bit more good. Tier four, you'd have like a significant suit, something like big, bulky, significant features. And yes, I've been pointed out, like mine, I consider mine a tier 4 because it's very heavy, very bulky, and it has big features like the big wings. Um, then, last we have the tier 5, which would be the huge ones. And we're talking about, I don't know if any of you here have been to CFZ recently, yeah? If I say to you, Rocky, the one, the Rocky raccoon that carries the big spoon around, yeah, I consider him tier 5 because you, have you seen how much padding is on there? It's vast and it's very, very heavy. So, yeah, that would be what I consider tier 5. Um, I'm messing around with my microphone. <laughs> Anyway, she's still pretty nervous even though I've just got going. Uh, right, moving on, fursuit do's and don'ts. Do brush your fursuit. Do wash it wherever possible, uh, wherever you can. Now this is, I know, it's not always possible if you have an airbrushed fursuit. Talion! Hello! Um, sorry about that. Um, it's not always possible if you have an airbrush suit, in which case you would have, your other choice would be isopropyl alcohol. It's very good at killing bacteria. I probably don't really want to use it as pure form. It's not exactly good for you. So if you have like isopropyl alcohol in a mixture of 50-50 or 60-40, you should be okay with that because it'll help kill all the bacteria inside. It doesn't smell particularly great, so you might also want to use things like um, yeah, first of all, refresh your space, which will, you know, it says you need to like fruits and berries, and yeah, it smell nice, and some things like that. Um, sorry, I'm just uh, Air out the suit, basically hang it up onto like, um, a rack or anything like that, hang it up onto rails, things like that, let it air out. It will take at least a few days to air out properly. It will take ages to dry when you wash it. It could take, you know, several days, especially depending on how much padding and all there is in there. So don't panic if after a day or so it still feels damp inside after washing it. Uh, that's another thing, when you wash it on a cold temperature, do not put it in to a hot wash. It will melt the fur and it will come out um, So yeah, do not put it in a hot wash. Use a cold wash. Cold, coldest as possible. Um, and let it dry out for over a period of a few days. Just running my way again. <laughs> Lastly, we've got a bit of a controversial topic, but I figured I need to kind of touch on this anyway. Not that we have a problem with this here, because I don't think anyone does. Mursuits. <laughs> right, we do not allow mursuits here at the minute. In any shape or form, because it's... <laughs> <laughs> Reason being is because it's, you know, it's nasty. I mean, you can do whatever you want to do behind closed doors is fine, whatever. But if you want to wear your character out in public or to fur meets or anything like that, you can't at least get a second suit. So you do not wear your nasty, crusty, horrible, yeah, your stain covered fur suit out in public. Because people will tell, it doesn't matter how much you wash it. It, it does show up and it's not nice. So, not as I said, not that anyone here at the Soto Meeks does that. Not that I'm aware of, and I know, none of that I can see here. So, you know, just, I had to cover that topic because it's part of, part and parcel. Um, moving on, useful gear. I do have a couple of I have forgotten one of my blocks, which is kind of annoying. Very useful to keep inside 
inside your head, you can put it on your head and it will absorb a lot of the sweat and keep the sweat from running down into your eyes and it will sting like butt. Sweat stings like butt when it gets into your eyes. This will help you stop that. It's a short sweat band, just go down your forehead. And it's really good. It's a good idea to get one Under Armour. Now, you don't have to get specifically the Under Armour brand, but if you look for anything that's moisture or wicking, heat gear. Moisture wicking, heat gear. That will help mitigate and the, the moisture that you sweat out and the heat that you're going to generate inside the person. You will get very, very hot. This will help you mitigate some of that heat and that moisture. I don't know if anyone wants to feel it. It's, it's like a special kind of Under Armour brand, I got a, I got my set, a set of shirt, uh, shirt and shorts of eBay, a whole complete set for forty pounds, so twenty pounds a piece. That's not bad, and you could be looking at you know, another hour extension to cross your time, really, if you're kind of pushing for extra time. Now this is one of the things I said. This is an easy pull down vest. It's very expensive, but very helpful. Annoyingly, I've forgotten the gel packs. <laughs> I know, really shit, yeah, well done, <laughs> Oh, well, we've got one in one right here. And it's very, very, it, it can be quite comfortable. If you, you know, it's, it's not too bad. It's got essentially very holy, it's like netting. And it's got stretchy, stretchy uh, elasticated bands on it and things like that. So if you want to uh, tighten it up or anything like that, it's not too bad. Um, but these, the vest itself, you're probably looking at around £90. Just the vest, no packs or anything. If you're looking at getting the packs as well, the, the, the gel packs, you'd be looking at probably about £20 each. And there's four that goes in one of these. So you'd be looking at around £100. £150 for, a, for one of these sets. Uh, they'll give, they, you know, depending on what packs you get, you can get two different types of packs. You have the short ones, which are probably significantly more. They will only last half an hour or so. But they, they're, they're a lot cooler. They'll keep you a lot cooler for us to get that short period. Then you get the ones that are nice, depending on what you're doing. But they, they will keep you about 20 degrees, maybe a little bit lower. So it's not as much cooling, but it is better. It depends on what you want to do. If you're like a first dancer, for example, who's going to be on stage for like five, maybe ten minutes at a push, doing a lot of dancing around and we're not getting, you know, getting quite hot with that, you probably want the shorter ones because they'll keep you cooler for that short period of time. But if you're just doing general shooting, things like a con or a meet or something like that, in order to help keep you cooler for longer, you want to get the long ones, the orange ones, they'll last up to an hour. Um, right, uh, lastly, another bit of kit, a repair kit. Very, very helpful when you go away to cons, meets and things like that. I do have one here somewhere.